I go by CK. I am. I just turned 32, and I'm currently based in Georgia. Awesome. I'm, I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia myself. Could you give us some background? What's, what's your current job? Yeah, my job, freelance. I would say maybe a freelance content creator slash actor and model. I had a. I was also a teacher for a long. I've been a teacher for a long time, and I've been making that transition away from being a full time anything. So I have different streams of income, and I'm moving towards. I'm restarting my business again this summer which has been really helpful for me to see the gaps. How's that going for you, I guess, transitioning? What did you do prior to doing more, more freelancing work? I was a teacher. I was a real estate agent in New York City, and I was working in different kitchens on the weekend. What What did you teach? I was teaching after school STEM. I was a STEM instructor, robotics. What age was it? I was teaching, I want to say third graders all the way through high school. High school was a little, yeah, I was teaching more like middle school, third graders, elementary, middle school. Dive into current career and what you're doing freelancing. Could you give a little background on, on that? Sure, yeah. So I just got a job as a content creator, copywriter. I went into school for to be a writer for a entertainment app. So I create content and their social media and marketing part-time. And the most of my, I mean, most of my time right now goes into working on the farm. That's how I live and keep myself alive. I've been farm hopping through a program called wolf for the past seven months. So I'm working on a farm here and then I'm going to go back to New York City in a couple of weeks and hit some farms along the way and meet some more farmers and learn from them. Awesome. So a lot more detail on, on that farming, on what you're doing there and that, and that program. So a little more context, you, you're living at someone yeah. else's farm, helping them with, with their land and everything right now? Right, right, right. So it's a program called WOLF, W-W-O-O-F. It's Worldwide Organic Opportunities for Farmers and you can basically work on, it's all over the world. So you can go anywhere in the world and you can live and work on the farm in exchange for housing and food awesome. and that's what I've been awesome. doing for the past seven months and how'd you get into that I've always sort of known about the program and I've wanted to do it back in my 20s but I was in school and in grad school and on and not in the right space I didn't have a vehicle and all that stuff so when 2020 hit, I moved to the woods, made the album, toured the album for a little bit. I'm, I'm also a musician. That's why I'm also doing this. And after the album was done, I was living in my van in New York City and winter came and I was like, I feel like this is, I don't know, like spirit called me to go to North Carolina and find a farm in North Carolina. So that's what I did. I got a, I got a wolf registration for a whole year and found a farm in Raleigh and drove to Raleigh and was there. And then spirit was like, all right, now you got to go to Alabama. So I've just, I've, I've been moving around. I've been pretty nomadic. What do you, the current farm you're doing in or you're on in, in Georgia? Yeah, they, so it's a nonprofit that's intercepting poverty and hunger and the food that we grow on the farm, like we have chickens, we have donkeys and goats and rabbits and a huge vegetable, it's like three acres. We have a vegetable field. All the food that we grow goes directly to feeding the community. That's awesome. Yeah. Make, make an impact in the world. So that's awesome. So, um, what was, what was your, what was your childhood like? Was, um, were there any farmers in your family or where, where did you grow up? Yeah, my childhood, I well okay I'll, I'll say that I grew I grew up in Singapore I grew up I spent 19 years in Singapore I was born in New Zealand and then they took me away <laughs> to Singapore for 19 years it's I mean if you know anything about Singapore it's a really urban there's not there are some farms but it's like on the outskirts of Singapore and if you're not really into that industry it's not something that you would be exposed to unless you actively sought that sort of work out so I grew up in I mean very competitive academically lots of lots of school lots of after school lots of tuition lots of extracurricular stuff I mean, when you ask that question what my childhood was like the word tumultuous came up it was pretty chaotic I feel like maybe that that's why I'm really attracted to New York City because it's just chaos. But that was, yeah. And, and so when, when did you move to the United States? Well, I was 19, so I must have been 2010. Yeah, 2010. Did you move to New York at the time? No, I moved to Massachusetts to do my undergrad. Okay, and what did you study in undergrad? <laughs> Yeah, I got a double major in theater arts and women and gender studies. And then I stayed on for my graduate program, which was a master's in community development and urban planning. And then I wrote a play that was a culmination of my experiences as an after school. I was teaching theater at the time, theater and literacy. And I was also the program manager for the Worcester pop-up. That was a collaboration between the banks, the Worcester, oh my goodness, Bay State Savings Bank, the Worcester Cultural Coalition, and one more partner. I think it was the economic development of Worcester. So I was the main person getting
getting artists in and putting art on the walls and organizing that stuff. So I had my grad school experience, my teaching experience and that experience. And I wrote a play about my interactions with people and the gaps that existed, you know, from someone who wants to do good work in the world, right? Intentions are important, but like what actually happens at the end of the day is also really important. And while a program can exist like that, it's still really problematic. So I wrote about those things. And then that play, along with my other pieces of writing, got me into my second graduate program where I went to do my MFA in New York City at Pratt. That was, I feel like, the the unlocking of my trauma and my childhood and the things that like I just sort of like shoved away and just wanted to be happy, right? I just wanted to be a happy college girl and like go get my job, you know what I mean? But yeah. after that program, I couldn't anymore. When it comes to like your, your upbringing too, how did how did your parents approach money and how do you think that in, kind of impacted uh, your your philosophies and, and how you manage your own money? Yeah, okay. So let me completely transparent. Okay, so this is really helpful, right? Like what you're doing and it, it helps when people are honest with, with that kind of stuff. So I experienced extreme poverty when I was younger and then and homelessness and so when I say it was really chaotic it was really chaotic and I feel like I was reading something about the first seven years of someone's life right like the first seven years is really crucial right so whatever you've been exposed to is sort of like someone was like you show me the first seven years of someone's life and I can show you the rest of their life right and so I had that up until I was like eight or nine and then my dad got remarried to my stepmom and then we like transitioned from like being in different like I was in different shelters and like all that stuff running around <laughs> you know with that kind of life to like stability suddenly we were living in a bundle suddenly I had three other siblings suddenly we had helpers in the house suddenly I had really healthy food in the fridge you know so I got to experience extremes I've got to experience the extremes I would say that yeah so how do you think that I guess has influenced your knowledge and how you've managed your money going from extreme poverty to the other side living in a bungalow and, and having helpers on the house yeah how it has impacted I've sort of seen money as maybe six months ago maybe like eight eight months ago I would have a different answer for you but I never I, I never thought of it I never had to think of it I never wanted to think of it and I didn't have to I didn't have to and I didn't want to I wanted to go off and be an actor and make a lot of money and solve child prostitution that was my goal since I was 17 still is when I finished school in 20 graduate 2018 that was my first like shove out into the real world and it was my first time getting an apartment by myself it was the first time living and that's why I had to get a restaurant job because I lost a job and then I had to make extra money to make rent and it was the first time I was like oh shit like this is this is how the game works right like I had co-workers who were living in the projects who no matter how much they worked it was never enough so I so I saw and then at the same time I was in a I was a real estate agent so I got to see these like really crazy expensive houses i've just always been exposed to both sides it feels like i don't know how to answer that question right now but how it has affected me yeah it was just it was just something that i like never thought about i had really negative impressions about money my stepmom would always like say stuff like you know you haven't really made any money yet even though that wasn't true i was babysitting i was working three jobs in grad school so like that wasn't true so i always sort of just saw money as like an immediate resource i think i feel yeah if i did i'm gonna close my window the fire the fire people are here for some reason hold on real quick if i were to be like you know really digging at, for this question or into this question so they are like firemen coming into the I don't know why it doesn't seem yeah yeah it's 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 been a resource like like even now if you see like my like my finances right I'll make this amount of money and like I know at least now I know that I want to get out of debt a year ago I would have I, I, I wouldn't have been, I was living in the woods making music like that <laughs> like that was all I cared about was being was having enough money to pay for gas cat food my food car insurance maybe I wasn't even I was without insurance for a minute what I want to talk about that <laughs> you know and I, like it was just like an immediate resource like, what I needed to get done now do I have enough yes or no and if I don't how do I make more that kind of thing it wasn't anything to like invest or save or pay off my debt but I did watch I was going to ask you actually if you know of Ramit Sethi yeah he's he's one of the guys that's inspired me to, to kind of do this yep same huge influence on that it was one day I was making dumplings in the in, in the woods and I was like I'm done I like I was like I don't want to live like this anymore so I googled I was like how to be financially stable <laughs> something he was like he said in one of the videos I think it was like an Evan Carmichael video he was like so you want to be financially stable because you want to continue living <laughs> I was like, ding, okay. <laughs> I've been this is like might be a little bit dark right now, but like I was like I've been subconsciously suicidal, so I was like I didn't. I was like I don't really want to live. No, but seriously, you know, I was like, oh right, because I do. I was like, right, <laughs> do I want to be alive in three years? Like, oh yeah, no, I feel like I do. So I'm gonna have to get this straight, you know, get this straight, straight now. So I guess what what clicked in in your mind in the last you said I guess a year about uh, at the time you said you wouldn't want to get out out of debt. And now now you're in a spot or thinking that hey, I, I want to do this. I think it was like oh yeah yeah okay so. I so this so earlier this year I reached a point financially where I was like really comfortable it's the most comfortable that I've been in in maybe the last three years and I was like I really like this it's like okay cool if there's an audition in New York City that I have to go to I can do that 
if my van needs to get fixed, it was like a six hundred dollar expense. Like I wouldn't even had that much money. I was like, oh, I want to be able to do these things. Like I want to be able to take an impromptu trip to go visit my parents in Hawaii because they're there right now. I want to be able to get a cat tree for my cat. If I want to, I wanted to get a puppy. Is what I is what I really wanted to get a puppy. And I was like, I want to be able to afford a puppy. And then I want to afford three puppies. And I want to afford seven. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, I want this. How do I do this? What do I have to do? And the first thing was get a bit. I guess on a on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate your your current financial situation from one being horrible ten to being perfect? I'll say like three point five. And why why do you say that? Let's I guess let's let's go through. You sent over some different debts and stuff that you have right now. Let's kind of go through that. And I'm curious, you like you went to went to college? Did you incur any student loan debts when you went to grad school or, mm, or undergrad? No, 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 no. All my debt was travel debt. It was I got scholarships to go and I took the help from my dad and my stepmom as therapy for all the years of trauma that they introduced into my life. <laughs> So I was like, no, nope, you're you're gonna pay for all of this. I have no guilt about that. Thank you very much, actually. So no, all of my debt is I traveled a ton, especially when I was in grad school for the summer. So I would go on road trips with my best friend, and I was like, put on a credit card. We like fake got married at an airport, and then I like qualified for a credit card which had a really high amount, and I was like, YOLO. Yes, yeah, so r- right now you have about six thousand dollars in debt, a little bit over that it seems. Yeah. Um, what was the previous sin? What is that? Is that and that's all from traveling? You're saying traveling, living in New York City. Sorry, there's like an EMS ambulance outside now and there's like camera equipment. I have no idea what's going on and the cops are here. This is my financial situation literally externalized right now in front of us. This is so funny. I wish I could show... You know what? Can I put my camera around and show you actually? I don't know. Where am I? Where am I? Okay. It'll get broken up. I don't know why it's like lagging, but you can see the... Yeah, straight oh, wow. up. Yeah, I see the ambulance. Yeah, this is this is so funny. I can't right now. <laughs> okay, what were we college debt? No, we're, so yeah, tra- traveling New York City. I mean, I was working. I was what was I doing? I was nannying and I was working at as an, as an after school semi instructor and still it, it still wasn't enough how long have you had that that credit card debt right now has it, have it has it just continued to have a balance over the last few years or is this is this relatively over the last year or two no i've managed to bring it down significantly actually or oh my god it was like seven thousand i was freaking freak i think it was 10 it was like close to 10 or 7 in 2019 and now that credit card specifically is the three is the 3700 one okay Th- 3100 yeah. so it, it was yeah, it was yeah, ten thousand. now it's now it's three thousand but then you've also added on another credit card that's 1500 another one that has about five hundred dollars um, correct for those. yeah correct can you, can you walk us through i guess your current your current budgeting process and how how you think about managing your expenses every single month yeah how your prior, yeah my budget is pay off my debt like whatever i make i'm putting aside half of it to pay off my debt like even like this week what like whatever i make my my main goal is to finish paying off the 500 dollars one that's like 490 on it left and that's supposed to, i was supposed to pay that off by may 2nd and i'm just, i'm just waiting to get paid from from other gigs because once after May 2nd, what's the next three days? After May 2nd, they start incurring interest. So ideally, I would have paid that off by now. So after that one gets paid off, whatever money I make, I put, I'm, and I'm also saving to get my van tuned up and it needs to, like, it needs to get service before I make that road trip back to New York. And then after that one is the either parking ticket that I didn't give you because that I don't count that as debt. I don't even want to pay those TBH. But I'm going to have to, especially if I'm going to be living in New York City again, they might pull my van. So that's like $500 parking tickets from when I was living in New York City. I got, yeah, I got, I got all of those tickets in one week. I was living in New York for four months and I didn't get any parking tickets, anything except that one week last week that i was there definitely we need to make sure you need to pay those off because the government will uh will tow your car and yep. impound it and still still debt technically is uh our, our parking bills so okay got you so yeah that would be the next one i guess you just talked about prioritizing your debts going for the the smaller one right now the 490 dollars that hopefully you'll be able to pay off before it starts recurring interest in a couple of days and then attacking the other ones what's what's your current monthly expenses um i took a look through some some of the different bank statements that you have um different food it looks like you're in new york um a few weeks ago as well um at the end of march so a lot of a lot of food on here really not not too many crazy spending purchases up on here but What's your, what would you say your, your monthly current expenses are? So March was kind of weird because I was in New York and normally I wouldn't be there for that long. That's number one. That was for a job. So I whatever I spent in New York, I made up and I made up more. So it wasn't a loss for that trip. My monthly expenses, I mean, besides cat food, cat litter, my phone bill, some like two or three subscriptions, so like my Google One Plus is like $1.99 and my Spotify. I don't have, I really don't have that many. And, and then my car insurance. That's it. That's literally it. Because I don't have to pay for food unless I want to buy something outside of what I get provided for on the farm. And I don't have rent and utilities. Would you like to so what would you say, that? I guess, if you don't have to pay for food, 
and you're living on the farm, your monthly expenses are how much a month would you say? I would say like 250. That's, I mean, that's, that's awesome. You're getting free, free food, free rent. I mean, that's, that's typically the biggest expenses for, for exactly. people. So, I mean, you have, have a great opportunity to, to build that income up so you can pay off your debt really quickly exactly. with, with those expenses being covered. So um, I do, I do have one question, I guess, on, um, I see on, on a transaction from, from, uh, March, uh, using a firm pay, are you using uh, a firm for, for payments and stuff? Is that the buy now pay later? Yeah, um, that mm-hmm, yeah, that's like Clara now where you where you can pay off your purchases in monthly installments without incurring interest. That was for the airplane ticket. I had to I had to extend my trip for a few days and thankfully they let me do that. And I guess I have a question for you on that when it comes to like traveling for, for these gigs, are they covering any travel expenses or or no? No. So I actually went for a teaching job. That's why it warranted. Yeah. And so when I'm in New York City for work that is not music related, I will use the opportunity to perform as much as I can and make connections and grow my business that way. And so going to New York to, for the teaching job, how, how much did you get paid for, for that teaching job and how much did it cost you to get there and back? Sure. The teaching job was 450 And while I was there, I was able to work as a tester. So I made an extra 300 and then I made an extra 137 So however much that is, like seven to seven and eight. And then to go there, it was, I think it was like two fifty three fifty plus the airplane ticket and then another hundred for because I go into um, Jersey and got a back. Yeah, I would, I would say my travel expenses for that trip were probably between three fifty and four hundred. And that includes the plane ticket you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're making I guess you're making about four hundred dollars in on that if right. you made eight hundred dollars and then four hundred on mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. What what are your long term long term financial goals? Get out of debt and stay out of debt completely. Be able to do what I'm doing now, but make my okay. So my monthly goal is to make ten thousand a month. That's my my first right, and I've managed to find a way to do that. In save, I want to make a hundred in in a year. If I make three three hundred and fifty dollars every day for the next year, I would have enough to buy land and build my house my tiny house. Tiny houses are awesome. I mean, that's, that, that, that's an awesome goal. And that's, that's an awesome dream. And definitely that's, that's an attainable goal to, to get to. I mean, it'd be yeah. a, a great income, be $125,000 a year. So after taxes, you'd, you'd be sitting around, sitting around 90, $90,000, probably take home pay um, after that. It's crazy. So, I mean, that, that's, that's a phenomenal income to, to be at and to strive for. But what would what, you say your currently current monthly income's at? Are between five to a thousand right now, 500 to a thousand, depending. And what's your current plan of action and, and to, to increase that from 500, a thousand to $10,000 a month? Yeah. So my business, I don't know if I shared it with you. I don't think I did. It's liberatory learners. That's my Minecraft business that I started at the end of 2020. And my goal is to teach from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then again, from three to I think it's 5.30, I want to charge $15 an hour. And I want to have eight to 10 kids in each class. So from nine to 10, and then I'll teach from 10.30 to 11.30. And then I'm going to teach from 12 to one. I'll take a two hour break. And then I'll teach again from three to 5.30. Ideally, all of those classes would be filled with eight to 10 kids. With eight kids, I'm making 360 a, a day, if not more. And what, what's your goal to get uh, more kids into those classes? So... For example, today I worked in the I worked for a volunteer session and I was leading a Girl Scout troop. So I had four or five girls with me and the volunteer. And I told them and we sat around and we cleaned clamshells, plastic clamshells, and I told them about my classes and I got her email address and I have a running list of Facebook groups and moms, specifically homeschool kids, to reach out and this is really helpful by the way. Really, thank you. I feel I I feel like <laughs> it's just really possible. So yeah, so I'm gonna reach out to them and let them know that I'm just gonna start teaching either in and this is what I have to figure out if I want to start teaching in June or if I want to start teaching in July. I have a job lined up in New York City that starts end of June through August where I'll be making 46 an hour teaching fingers crossed in the Bronx. I still have to get cleared and get onboarded and stuff. So that's my like that, that piece of finance thingy is going to pay off my $3,100 bill. Cause I plan to live in my van still in New York, unless some magical bunny comes around and lets me live with them. My constraint is that I really don't want to have to pay for rent. Like that's been my goal is to not have to do that. And so 
the job this summer, the teaching job, you said you'll get paid $46 an hour. And how, how many hours a week would you be working? I'll be working 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and sometimes till 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday. That comes out to about four grand for the whole eight weeks. Four grand for, okay. So it'd be four grand over eight weeks, you'd be, you'd be making something. And that's just okay. one stream of income. So I can still teach on the weekends. And I can still teach in the evenings and I still have my acting jobs that I get called in. And sometimes that ranges from like 1200, sometimes to like a two day model shoot to like 500. Like one time I just had this random gig in Boston where I just had to read a script over Zoom and that was like $500. You know what I'm saying? So it really depends. Yes. Okay. So the teaching job, about $2,000 a month for two months. And then your goal is to be trying to find other sources of income during that time mm -hmm. and live, mm -hmm. living out of your van. So you're not having to pay New York rent. city rent. I guess my, my question, cause I mean, right now you have, like you said, a six, six, $7,000 in, in debt. If you include the parking tickets in there, the four ninety, I think you can, you can pay off quickly. You'd have about $6,500 left after that. I mean, I think, I think you're in a, you're intelligent. You're, you're hustling, trying to figure out how to, how to get that income up. I guess my question for you is you have opportunities and also, but they're, they're inconsistent. I mean, that's, that's what a freelance gigs is. It's, it's uh it can be one month is, is a high month. The next month's a low month. You can go two, three, eight weeks without making much money. And then it can all come. The question is how, how can you get that to be more consistent or are there other side jobs or side things you can do to have more consistency so they can pay off this debt faster? Because my worrying concern is if you're waiting on the next gig, whatever it might be, then you'll be putting more stuff on credit cards and then our, your van might break down you have to put another thing on a credit card okay. and you won't be able to knock that debt down without consistent income. Yeah, the main goal right now is to have people signed up for my classes. I feel like that, I know I'm a really good teacher. I've been teaching for a long time. I know the kids gravitate to the material that I'm teaching them. My curriculum has, it's signing kids up. I need to sign kids up to have my, you know, even if I'm only teaching three hours a week, that's still a consistent amount of income. And my content creator job is going to be consistent. So that between like 80 to 160 a week, depending on how many hours they need from me. That's, that's, that's my main goal. And then before that, I'm going to have to swing through my Google Docs and clean out my curriculum. So that's what I've been doing. Even jumping on this call is something that I wouldn't have done a week ago if I didn't clean out my Google Docs. It's been a lot of like organization. Like the three main things I'm focusing on right now is organization, completion, and consistency. Once I organize my stuff, I have it clear. I complete the tasks on my to-do list, whether it's sending a STEM to a producer or finishing an audition, getting back to an email, you know, my newsletter in numbers are growing because I'm performing more. And when I perform, I talk about what I care about, which is ending plastic and slaughter houses and homelessness and all this stuff. And people message me their email addresses and I get that onto an email list and I create a newsletter and that goes out. And I'm running an internship program with some more kids this summer. And that will, I can see it is what I'm saying. I can see, and I'm not. I'm not letting this stress me out because once I get stressed, I can't do anything. I just want to go to sleep. I mean, you're doing a lot right now, trying to trying to handle performing, music, teaching, freelance content creation. Do you ever worry about doing too much and not doing one thing or two things exceptionally well that can really help help transform you? Like, if you love teaching and you love content creation, then kind of leaning more into those. Obviously, you have to keep income coming in or be on the farm to pay for the living expenses, but trying to consolidate it down or like on the on the teaching perspective, you obviously love teaching and working with kids. Have you looked on like online platforms that need need teachers remotely that that you could sign up for and help bring in additional income and consistent income on that on that front? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have and I have applied and I have also to answer your question, I have thought about focusing on one or two things. I feel like this is the most I've been focused. It, this has been a, this, this is going to be a process. Man. I'm like, I'm not going to like, like, this is going to be a couple more years of me streamlining my, my time with what it is I want to do. Music comes first above everything else. It might not bring me the income that I that I need right now, which is why I'm doing other things that I know you're like, you need, you do need. There, there are no quotation marks around that you do. I, absolutely, I, know, I, I see you, I see you. <laughs> but it, I, every time I choose music above everything else, these other things, they happen a lot quicker and a lot. Like music's my thing. Like it's just, there's nothing else that I want to do. My, my, my long-term plan is to wake up, play a DJ set, make some food and be on the beach. Like that's the vision. Music is the compass my north star you could say that no, and it's an investment I mean, you know i think i think that's a great a great vision and and you have the vision and goal you're going to get to i guess the question is how can you how can you get to that but also how can you sustain yourself and financially as well and 
pay off these debts. And obviously music is a very, very difficult industry to, to make it in and make, make a lot of money. I mean, there's, it's a ruthless industry too. And I guess my concern is solely focusing on that while not taking care of your debt and taking care of your finances. Like what, what happens if, if you don't end up making a, a meaningful amount on music 10, 15 years from now, but if you can focus on other income opportunities and still have music, still have that as your passion project and spend four hours down at night, then you can still, you can still one day wake up and, and be a musician and, and have that chance, but you need to take care of your debts and you need to take care of yourself financially before just putting ten, twenty thousand dollars worth of credit card debt, waking up with that in ten years because you've been focused on music. That's not a award I'd I'd want you to be in. I don't think that's a award you want to wake up in and, and be in either. So my question yeah. is like how do you how do you set yourself up financially for success if music's a very difficult industry to make make money initially until you, you really blow up? Yeah. The goal isn't to make a lot of money. The goal I mean, well, just, the goal just, is to make enough, enough money to live off. Yeah, the goal really is to make really good music. As in, from okay, that's to make really good music with really good people. That's my goal. You're right. I do spend four hours at night finishing up songs and sending them off. Like I just got a song back from a producer that I've been working with, and it sounds amazing. And I'm like, right, this is going to go on the next album that I'm working on. The the how my guy has been happening. Like I cannot tell you how spirits taking care of me for doing what I'm doing. I could not have anticipated getting that random gig. There's no way that I that I would know how. I I would love some. St- more st- this is the most stable I've been as an independent artist without relying on unemployment checks or the house that I was living. You know what I'm saying? This is the most amount of stability and consistency that I've ever experienced in my life. Even even waking up and putting music as my first task to do, that took me three or four years. Oh, no, that's a lie. It took me a whole life. It's, 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 it's taking my whole life to finally prioritize the thing that makes my heart sing. When I'm in the vibrational frequency of happiness and joy and love, and gratitude the other things take care of themselves i cannot explain the how the how takes care of itself so long as i'm showing up for spirit and i know that i'm meeting with purity and with the correct things that make me ha- you know it's i can't i like the matrix and i we've said goodbye we, like we said goodbye in 2020 when i quit my real estate job 2021 i mean i i fully am aligned in in terms of like pursuing passions and, and doing that i just also want you to take care of yourself and have stability too because you're in the most stable spot you've been uh, like you said you've been uh, ever and um, i think that comes obviously a lot with with the farm gig because i mean that's a great opportunity you're helping take care of a farm helping feed people in the local community you're getting housing you're getting food but if you're not doing that or you stop doing that, obviously you're gonna have more expenses. You have to have to pay for more food. You have more more expenses than you're currently having right now. Which, if you're not having income coming in, then it's gonna make it more difficult or, or go into more debt. Or if your your car breaks down, or if you don't want to live in your van anymore because your your van breaks down, you have to pay rent. That's obviously an expense you're not in right now. So I'm just trying to think about those things as well as how you prepare yourself for those instances. Obviously hoping for the best, but prepare yourself for those. Or one day you wake up and say, hey, I don't want to work on the farm anymore, and you're still only making five hundred thousand dollars a month. You don't really have a fle- have any flexibility to say, hey, I'm going to go pay rent anymore because you can't live off of $500 a month if you're paying for rent, paying for gas, paying for car insurance, and paying for food. That's just not sustainable, in, whether it's in Georgia, and it's definitely not sustainable or possible in, in New York City. So I guess my question is, how do you... And I'm not saying you have to go, go, go get a, a corporate job or go do X, Y, and Z, but how can you get more consistent income being a teacher? How can you... If, if you love teaching, what is it about teaching you love? And maybe as you kind of get this Minecraft teaching stuff off the ground with kids, you actually go teach at a school, go be a substitute teacher somewhere, or go be a full-time teacher at a school. And you'll be making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 depending on, on the school. And that's going to be a, a good income, a lot more consistent than where you are right now. Mm-hmm. And then you can still, you, you'll be home. School ends at three o'clock. You have to grade papers, whatever it might be. And then you can be doing music from seven to 11 o'clock at night, or mm-hmm. whatever it might be. But yep. that would at least provide more flexibility for you, more sustainability. And also, I mean, with these different debts you have right now, you have a interest payment coming up right now. And then I'm not sure what your current monthly payments are on those other ones. You said you've only been paying monthly payments on the 491. So I guess the other ones you haven't even been paying monthly payments on. But if, if you're not paying off those, those are just gonna those are gonna accrue and add more interest and gonna kind of put you in worse spots. So I'm so trying to think one, how, how yeah, to so the music. The one that has the interest is a 490, and the one that's the um, I think that was the unemployment tax. They just like decided to ring up. It was only like 600, but then I didn't know about it because I wasn't living at the house. I was getting mail. And so all of a sudden it's gone up to like 1400. So those are the only two that are concurrent. The the 3100 doesn't have any interest on it, which is why I'm not I'm not in any sort of panic mode for that one. So I know I can pay off my debt by the end of August. The ones with interest, you know what I mean. My goal is to finish, is to be out of debt by the end of the year. So once once my debt's cleared, and and I hear you, and I have a farm lined up in August. Like I'm not trying to stop the farming thing. Like I want to continue learning, but I, there's not. I haven't learned nearly enough 
if I'm going to buy my land and know what the heck to do once I have my land, I need, and this is the reason why I'm doing it. I'm learning. I didn't know anything about growing tomatoes or how to hold a wheelbarrow. You know what I'm saying? Like this, like these are skills that I know I'm going to need to learn once I'm ready. So I'm setting myself up that way. I am, I'm probably going to be the, I'm going to be on a farm until the end of the year once my debt's been cleared off. And then by then I would not only have my debt cleared off, but I would have a more consistent income flow with the kids that I'm teaching. Hey babe. And maybe get a puppy. Let's see. I, I, I mean, I think, I think that's a great idea is to continue the farm stuff while, while you're paying off your debts. I mean, that's uh whether you're living in Atlanta or you're living in, in New York city, it's saving you between food and rent is going to save you thousand two thousand plus dollars a month in terms yeah. of living expenses uh, so i think that's that's a phenomenal thing to do and the biggest thing is how how can you build more consistent income and figuring out websites or things that you can do remote teaching too because that's something you're passionate about that could also be a lead, lead generator for you too for your other stuff so you go teach a, a class full of kids on one of these platforms and say hey also you love minecraft here's here's this and my other class i'm teaching that's great no all my classes are aged from so i teach from eight to 88 that's like my that's my main thing. So yeah, I mean, you want to help me out and give me five students to come on my Minecraft classes on Saturdays or Sundays, and that will be a fantastic help. If I know one, is, I I'm not I'm not a Minecrafter myself, but I'm just trying to think of ways how how can you how can you grow that business? How can you build sustainable rev or income as well with with teaching while you while you're doing music while you're building your Minecraft stuff as well? So yeah, I hear you. I'm really. I'm not I really appreciate the the care that you're coming from like I can see you really care about helping people in these situations like I'm gonna learn how to do stream yard today after after we get off this call and there's this guy in Atlanta that oh yeah you're you're like 25 minutes away this is so funny I can't really I can't even like, so so he's looking for someone to help him set up his stream yard and he's going to pay 150 to 200 so once I learn how to do that in the next two, two or three hours I'm going to go over there and help him and that's half of my debt and then that, once awesome. you know what I mean, yeah. And then once yeah. I get paid out, I, I, I really want to get out of this debt by like May second, May third, and then that's one. And then we have, and then I have the parking tickets, and then the other one. I think I mean you're you're setting a goal for the end of end of December, pay off this debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you're only, you said your monthly living expenses, $250, $300 a month with that, I think you can get out of this a lot quicker with finding, finding more opportunities, more, more things on the side. I think, I, I think realistically you could, you could be out of this by May, June, July, August, probably August, end of August. I mean, it's $1,500 to $1,700 a month extra you need to be making. I mean, that's you making from 500 to a thousand up to make $2,500 a month. I mean, that's, that's a $30,000 a year annual income. I think, I think you can, obviously it's, that's post taxes, but I think, I think you can do that. And I, I would have faith because obviously you, you're passionate. You are you sound like a hard worker. Working on a farm is not easy work. So you know you know how to work. It's just more so putting yourselves in opportunities to make that money. So Right. And and it's this this is deep wounding that we're talking about, right? Like I could, I could, if, if, if my goal, bro, like all I did in college was pay monopoly on the weekends, like no lie, like I wouldn't get, I wouldn't party. I wouldn't do anything until my senior year. Like I didn't, I wasn't, a, my main goal was to understand this system. So if, and when I have my mindset on something, I know I can accomplish it. But money, again, was never something that was on my mind. I didn't have the right attitude towards it. I didn't have the right framework of seeing it as a tool that I'm going to need. It was always this, like, how else can I avoid? You know, it's, it's a lot of avoidance. There's a lot of, so when we're talking about this stuff, it's not just about me finding, yeah, you're right. Cause I could, I have a, I have a great resume. I could go apply to work pretty much. I don't know anywhere. I, I don't know anywhere. A lot of them don't tell me I have the skills because I probably would off something if I were to work in corporate America. I really would. I would take all the toilet paper. I would steal all their food. Okay, but let's not go down. Okay, but, no, but seriously, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's who I am. Like, at my core, 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 I could have made a lot of money in real estate if I wanted to stay in real estate. But I saw, again, it was me seeing through the system and I was like, oh, this is why people are homeless. Like, I could literally see if I have to work a job and turn a single mom and her kid away, because their fat, because their housing budget doesn't make, I'm like, I, this is not anything that I want to give my energy to. And that applies to other jobs that I could be doing. I could work as a bartender. I, I, there are, there are things to do to make the money, but I'm very intentional with where I put my energy and what I'm doing to make the money. It's figuring out how to do that with, cause you, I mean, you want, obviously you said you didn't think about money as like as a tool. And now you think about, Hey, I want to go buy land and build my own farm. And it's like, obviously you need money to do that. And mm -hmm. that's why you're trying to pay off debt. And I'm just saying like thinking how, how much quicker you'll be able to get to that reality with your debt off the table. You want to have interest accruing, you want to have monthly, monthly payments on that. And that'll allow you to save up a lot more money quicker to get to that reality quicker than. I hear you say the word quick and I'm, I'm in no rush, bro. I'm, I'm really, I really, it would be lovely to wake up tomorrow and be out of debt. But what am I giving up in terms of experiences that I'm not going to have if, let's say, my stepmom, you know, has an epiphany and be like, you know, and she realizes that my sense of self-worth came from years of abuse. And she's like, oh, let me just pay all of this off. You know what I'm saying? 
like that would be great that mom who I don't talk to you know what I'm saying like but then how is it really no there's a there, there's a reason why I'm being I'm, I'm being asked to do this from the people that I'm meeting along the way it's a journey this is all and I'm reading I'm writing incredible music because of this heartbreak because of where I'm at right now like the music that's coming up from this process is incredible like I'm getting a children's book read I'm, I'm a children's book writer in May oh my god if you're around May 17th at the green room we're having a reading of the book that I wrote a year ago when I was in the cabin and you know that's been on my mind since 2014 and I finally got it finished and now it's getting in the process of getting illustrated and I'm, that's a fundraiser to finish the last eight pages of the book to get it illustrated and then I'm going to send it off I'm going to do another fundraiser to get it printed so like it's all this is all meant to happen the way it's meant to happen i'm meant to be where i'm at doing this no one can really understand like you're 32 years old go get married and have kids and i'm like bro i'm so far away from that you don't you don't have yeah. to get, get married and, and have kids i mean everyone everyone does things at different pace and what makes them happy and it's just figuring out the best best way to live your life and but also do it responsibly and i i i, I honestly i love the farming route that you're going i think that's phenomenal and I haven't heard of that before. So I think that's a great route to go to to learn, to help others in need and to help in terms of your housing expenses and, and food costs and everything as well there. So I was looking at my to-do list and I have Patreon circled. So I, I didn't mention this, but I do have a Patreon account that I'm be making. I'm going to be making strives. My goal, if I have to do rent down the future, is to have Patreon pay for my rent. So I just made a a different tier last night. I think it's like two dollars a month, and I'm going to hit up my Instagram followers. I think like fourteen hundred. I'm like, even if like a thousand people subscribe to my Patreon, there's my, you know, and I'm saying like, like there's my stability and. It really my my goal for my Patreon is another form of income that will yeah. contribute to my stability. So I just wanted to mention that before I forgot. That's good, and trying to figure out how to how to monetize that as well. So I guess I'm I'm curious too, and um just long long term long term financial goals. Obviously, you want to have a farm, and what other are your long term goals? Are you thinking anything about retirement or saving for retirement, or what's what's your plan there? Retirement savings yeah that'll be great i would love to get into a spot where right like Renit always says right like to have it be automated right so whatever income even 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 if i'm making like five dollars off of a donation like that still gets split up into 30 percent going into a savings going to my investments right so getting out of debt streamlining my income flows whatever goes in like right now i keep one of my accounts completely empty because if not money just gets taken out so i only put money in when i'm about to make an expense that's something that i've also learning how to do it which is great but yeah I, I would love to automate that process and have my income into different have different accounts for different things and one of them would be in a savings account one of them would be an investment and that would be amazing and what's what's holding you back from from doing that that's not my focus right now my focus is getting out of this debt and staying out of this debt and creating a stream of income that is consistent and once i have that stream of income that's consistent i'm gonna be able to automate those things last question i have really is what's your plan i guess over the next we've talked a little bit about it but curious what, what's your plan to to attack this debt are you going to try to quicker or are you just are you gonna are you set on hey i want to pay this off just by the end of december and and i don't want to try to do it i just want to go at my own pace just curious what what your thoughts are yeah i mean i gave myself to the end of december believability in terms of i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have expenses while i'm in your city so I don't anticipate all of that going to, you know, but I don't know, maybe you're right. Maybe I can find, I mean, and, and anything's possible, right? I, I could go to a school next week and have 50 kids sign up for my classes, right? And be completely out of debt in like two months. I have no idea. But right now I'm taking it day by day. I'm fin my goal is to finish the things off my to-do list. Once I, I, I know if I finish the things off my to-do list, I'm making strides, like, like small steps towards the bigger goal if i can pay this off sooner that would be amazing if not december is definitely my cutoff and i'm not taking on any more debt like i'm not even taking out a loan to buy a house or to but you know what i'm saying like do you have do you still have those credit cards open or have you have you cut them up and turn them off yep Oh, that's good. That's that's good. You're take, taking taking the right step on that. So you can't can't be adding more debt to the pile. And now you just the only thing you can do is is pay it, pay it down. So what advice would you give to someone in a similar spot to you? Follow your heart. I know you're like, what? That doesn't make any. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Baby knows best. Like your soul knows what you need to do. Especially, I would say if somebody knows what they want to do. For example, like if you asked me this in eight months ago, I wouldn't have even tell you what the heck I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? But because I have a very focused goal 
on finishing my like clearing this debt out and if that person has the same goals i would say i'll, I'll say to them make a list of obviously like seeing how much you have left seeing how much you make and then figuring out what really makes you happy seriously like what makes them really happy if it's making candles and they have like 200 dollars in the bank account i would say it depends on the type of person to it like if the if it, if the person is like me and have a ton of interests i would i know i would say the same thing i say follow your heart follow your heart like do what makes you happy but not irresponsibly not accruing more debt not and when i say like follow your heart like do what you want to do i like i don't mean go out and like party like i'm not you know what i'm saying like that's not at all what i like zero of what i mean i mean like take care of like take care of the mental health figure out dig a little deeper into self to figure out how i've been listening to a lot of abraham hicks i don't know if you've heard of abraham hicks but that's been really it's been i'm gonna send you some links after we get off in addition to the link to my school but it's been like really helping me get clear on my vibration like i feel like once i'm in the correct vibration and to that person as well to not be wallowing in the stress because the more stress you put on yourself the, the less you're going to attract the things you actually want. you're going to attract the things you don't want you might suddenly have another bill that comes out you know what i'm saying so taking care of ourselves of the of the person's self is number one mental health is key is everything everything with your mental no, health I've, you know what i'm saying no i, I fully agree you have to take care of yourself first and foremost mentally and physically otherwise it's no amount of money you can make in the world can can fix that. And you have to take care of yourself. And I, I fully agree with follow your passions, follow what you want to do, but at the same time, do it in a responsible way where you're not accruing debt and you're still bringing in sustainable income as well from it. So I'm impressed in terms of like how, what you've done to, to be able to do that in terms of like, hey, let's find this farming opportunity to learn, to grow and not incur those expenses. My only input, I guess, or advice would be is figure out how to build that income quicker and more sustainably so you can pay off these debts quicker because you'll feel like a different person not knowing, hey, I owe $7,000 to the bank and this interest of, of decisions that you've made in the past that have been sitting there and every single month a little bit of money comes out or, or and you have to pay to that. So I think once once you get past that, you're going to be feel a lot more free. You're going to feel a lot more energy to put it into building building your business and freelance work and enjoyment in life too. So I think, I think from a mental capacity, I think that's only going to benefit you. So thank you for echoing that appreciate it and i really appreciate you taking the time to do this for people i feel like people having just having the conversation right just showing up and having a conversation with someone about about something like this is really vulnerable and we end up touching on things that it's not it's not it's not easy i really appreciate you you coming on on today and for your time and and for your honesty and i mean we'd love to love to stay in touch and if you ever have questions for me that i can be beneficial for just reach out and you have my email and, and we can chat and i want to figure out how to help you in, in any way possible so i guess last question is did you learn anything from this experience what are your takeaways i learned that it's super important to get clear with oneself without clarity sort of swimming in the muck with goggles that don't even fit over your head so clarity is key when it comes to any decision finances finances the word finance there's a lot of there can be a lot of trauma around that world, but I feel like once someone puts in the time and the effort and the energy into understanding themselves in relation to that and what they want from their life, this is all like feedback for me. And and, and this all goes back to that one afternoon when I was making dumplings, Googling, how do I become financially free, right? Even having that step, putting putting my fin in front of the other and saying like, this is the part of the ocean that I want to reside in. I have no idea why these metaphors are coming out right now, but like that's the takeaway. It's like this, this, this experience has shown me if a person isn't ready to take that that no amount of help from outside will suffice even if somebody comes in and pays off someone's hundred thousand dollar debt if they're not willing to help themselves and have the clarity to do that what you're doing is futile i fully agree and i think uh, you hit a spot on the head and it kind of goes back to what you said if, if your stepmother came out and paid off your debt obviously i think you've changed over the last few months you want to pay off this debt but if, if you're in a spot and you have eight thousand dollars worth of debt and your stepmother comes and pays it off you go right back to those those ways of spinning and and no, I don't. I don't feel like no. I don't. I, don't I really. Think, I really I don't, don't. I don't think. I don't think you will. I don't think you will. Let me be clear on that. I think most people would. I think most people would, unless they've made that decision. Which you made that decision. You said eight months ago. How do I become financially free? How do I get out of debt? And you started researching and started learning. I think if that happened to you, you would be fine. You would stay out of debt. I think a lot of individuals that if they just had debt sitting there and they're not even planning to pay it off, and right. someone paid it off, they'd be they'd be in debt tomorrow right. on right something new. So really appreciate your time today. Let me know how I can help and, and hope you have a, a blessed rest of your day.
Thanks, Bailey. You as well. Thank you again. I'll talk to you soon. What's up, everyone? We just finished with CK here. Obviously, we had a lot to unpack from her childhood, living in different countries, coming to America, living in New York City, and now living on a farm to, to learn, to grow, and to help give back to her community. Like she said, she still has six to $7,000 worth of debt right now, and her income is about $500 to $1,000 a month. Right now, my biggest concern for her is how to increase that income. She doesn't want to go get a corporate job. She's doing great in terms of the farming gig because that pays for her housing, pays for her food, but her income, $500,000 a month, is not sustainable. If she decides to not live on a farm or she wants to live in a different city that doesn't have a farm, then that's going to be a whole other expense that's not going to be able to be uh, paid for by her $500,000 a month. And she's only living off of $200, $250 a month in terms of her current expenses right now because she has those paid for. It's really her goal needs to be, how can I increase this income? Whether it's going to find part-time teaching jobs that she can do, whether it's these online platforms for teaching that she can she can learn and, and teach and, and find children to teach something she enjoys, or it's her freelance stuff that she's really getting out of the ground for to, to provide income to make ends meet. I mean, she has a plan right now, paid debt off for the end of December. She seems reluctant a little bit in terms of getting getting other opportunities or getting a corporate job or a traditional job to to help pay that off quicker. She would feel a lot more free and she wants to do stuff at her own pace, but I'm really enjoying this conversation with CK. I do think she's doing tremendous work in the world to help give back to people in different communities, especially my hometown here in Atlanta, George. She's doing just out, doing it just outside of here. And she's, she's obviously gone through a lot throughout her childhood from extreme poverty to other side of the spectrum, as she said. Yeah, I really just enjoy this conversation, her being open and, and vulnerable and going to continue to stay in touch with her and, and follow up and see how I can help. So thank you all for joining. If you enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, my goal is to just help educate people in the world, talk more about money. It's it's a topic a lot of people don't like talking about, whether it's their income, their finances, just expenses, assets, their debts. People don't enjoy talking about this and they hold it in and don't know where to go, don't know how to get help. And my goal here is to help individuals think about money, to be more educated about money and for me to learn too. Uh, we're all in this together. The world called life. Everyone has ups and downs in their life. You can always learn from other individuals, some aspect from, from their life. So um, if you enjoyed this, subscribe. If you want to be on the show, go ahead and drop me an email in the uh, link below. And if you want to talk about talk about your expenses, talk about your financial situation, talk about your job, talk about your debts, talk about buying a house. I'm here to chat, here to have a conversation and uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank you.